So what I want to talk about today is why we write fan fiction, or why we read comic books, or why we even bother to use our imaginations. Hopefully this will not take an entire 10 minutes, because that would be really boring to listen to. But anyway, um, yeah, just a quick notification. These, I have more comic books than this, but th these are the ones that are available on my, on my bookshelf, which is here, and, and there, but that's mostly textbooks. Um, the other comics are stocked away in suitcases, but but these are my pajama pants that I wear frequently, and I love them. Anyway, I was introduced to comic books by my dad. I was, I remember being in our old garage, our old house, and we'd have Timbits, and he'd read his S Swamp Thing or Conan the Barbarian, and I'd re be reading my, you know, Veronica and Betty Archie comics, and it was quiet time between the two of us, and you could you know, imagine and pretend, or you could fret about character situations or what was going to happen to them, and I liked comics as a kid because, not just because it had pictures, but it was how the words were the pictures, like, you know, like kind of like in the old Batman cartoon where you can go bam or pow, and it made it more interactive almost, like reading, con like reading novels is all fine and good, and I mean, obviously... I read a wide variety, you know, there's Tolstoy, and, you know, then there's, you know, Graver Maguire, and then there's a witchcraft textbook, and then there's, you know, The Hobbit. So, I mean, I, I read a variety of novels and textbooks and things, but comics is where I can sit there and I can be, I, it's, everything seems to interact between the pictures and the words and, like, the sound effects that are kind of in there and, the costumes are outrageous, and I mean, like, the things that they could, that you can do in comics. I mean, Stephen Colbert is running for president, um, Obama met Spider-Man, um, you know, Storm was in the first black women to ever have, like, I guess, a station of prestige, you know, uh, and then that lady who was dating Spock in Star Trek 2009, I can't pronounce her name, but I mean, she was also one of the first black women to have such a powerful, like, role in, I guess, science fiction or comics or anything. Like, it's important, I think, to introduce kids at a young age to that books don't have to be boring. And, I mean, we spend so much time in front of a television set, we don't think for our own anymore. And, I mean, I recently sat down and watched Fox News. And, I mean, I understand now everyone makes fun of it. My IQ dropped, I think, several hundred points from watching that. I mean, oh, such a cr cruel and cold-blooded robbery. I'm like... And then I'm thinking, I turn to the man person, I'm like, but aren't most robberies cruel and cold-blooded in, in action and, you know, thought? Like, you don't think for yourself. And so when we come, it comes down to, like, writing, and one of the first things you do when you start writing is you either write stories, I think my first story was about a mouse, and his name was Max, and no one liked him. If I can find it, I'll read it to you. Um, but I mean, you write stories off of stuff that you know, like, they're blatant. Like, I wrote one with, like, centaurs and talking mushrooms and basilisks, and it was kind of like a Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings thing that I made my own, and it's a blatant, you know, plagiaristic att attempt on writing, you know, this huge saga that you don't get, you don't get past the first 10,000 words, but you enjoy it, and you, you spend so much time coming up with this character and this land and, like, the weird language that you haven't put any work into making. And it's just, it's easy to sit down, because all the work has been done for you with fan, with fan fiction. Like, you already have a base to work with. And then, I mean, once you're good with fan fiction, and you've established a base, and you've got, your writing has improved, either by increments or by leaps and bounds, then you can gradually work your way into, like, original stuff. And it's with original stuff that you can sit, sit back and be like, I really accomplished something. And not that fan fiction isn't an accomplishment, because I've seen really good stuff. Like, when you sit down there and you write 30,000 words and it's your own and, okay, yeah, it sucks and it's terrible, but you wrote it and it's yours and it's your own and, you know, you might have had a fight over about it with people, but it's something you're proud of and it's something that you made and you and it was, it's yours and it's something that we don't have anymore because we're so interconnected and we can't get off our Blackberries for five minutes and we can't, we have to be with somebody. So I think it's important to start off with comic books, where you can see interaction, be it between words and pictures, or different people, blacks and whites, polka dots, or, you know, Muslims and Jews, and Christians, and 
And with anything, it's important to see interaction, see what that is, what it's like, and then make it your own. And it's just in this world today, you don't see a whole lot of that. I don't, I don't see it very often, and it really makes me sad. But, um, yeah, that was my rant, and I'm going to stop ranting, because I think Megan can hear me, and she thinks that I'm a creeper. But my challenge for you, because I answered your challenges on my honor vlog, I'll leave, um, yeah, I'll leave a link to that in the bottom bar. Um, my challenge to you is, I want you to tell me what lymph is, and I'll tell you why it's important in the vlog, once I get it posted, because it's not posted yet. <laughs> so anyway, Maria, I hope you're less hot where you are. I'm going to go buy ice cream sandwiches. Bye.